I like crunch in my candy bars. I like crunch in my cereal. I even like a little crunch in my chocolate chip cookies. But where crunch is sometimes a problem is when we're talking about a major league roster. And the Dodgers are facing a pretty big roster crunch heading into 2024. We're going to talk all about that, what it looks like right now, what they still need to do this offseason, all that entire episode devoted to the Dodgers roster crunch. That's what's on tap. So let's get locked on Dodgers. You are Locked On Dodgers, your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Dodger fans, this is Locked On Dodgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. Remember, this show is free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube simply by searching for Locked On Dodgers. Or even better, go ahead and subscribe wherever you're watching or listening right now. Then you can be an everydayer just like we are. If this is your first time with us, I am Jeff Snyder. My normal co-host is Vince Samperio, although it's just me today. Vince and I are both lifelong Dodger fans just like you are. We've also both spent time covering the Dodgers in the press box and the locker room, so we're not quite insiders, but we bring you the smart fans' perspective on our boys in blue every weekday morning. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And uh, we're going to talk, like I said at the opening, we're going to talk about the roster crunch today because as the Dodgers, you know, uh, free agency starts as soon as the World Series is over, uh, basically. And so in the next week or so, the Dodgers are going to have this roster crunch to start dealing with. And uh, we're going to talk about basically everything you want to know. Uh, one of our listeners, Ian Lafferty on Twitter, uh, asked us to talk about this, and, and it was definitely on the schedule for some time. And right now makes a ton of sense because we are getting ready for free agency to start. And so we're going to start feeling the effects immediately. The, the Dodgers are going to start feeling the effects. And so uh, we'll, we'll talk about why there's a crunch and what they might do about it, basically. Uh, and so basically the 40-man roster right now, at, as we speak right now, because free agency hasn't started yet, uh, the, the season isn't over yet. I know it's over, but... Uh, the Dodgers have 51 players on their 40 man roster. How's that possible? Because when you are on the 60 day injured list, you don't count towards the 40 man roster. But as soon as the season ends, 60 man IL or 60 day IL goes away. And so all of those guys who are currently on the 60 day IL Walker Bueller, JP Fireyes, and Tony Gonsolin, Daniel Hudson, Dustin May, Jimmy Nelson, Alex Reyes, Blake Trinan, Gus Varland. Uh, Gavin Lux, Jake Marisnik. Those guys are no longer on the, the 60 day IL starting next week when free agency starts. Now, some of those guys will not be on the Dodgers either. Uh, you know, uh, Jimmy Nelson is not under contract, so he will no longer be a Dodger. So that, that was not an issue. But if you look at those 51 players and break them down, right now, 34 of those guys are under contract for next year. Uh, either eligible for arbitration, pre-arbitration, or actually under contract. And they have some of each of those guys. You know, Chris Taylor is on a contract. Uh, Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, they are on contracts. Uh, Dustin May, arbitration eligible. You know, uh, some guys even pre-arbitration. Uh, Michael Bush, pre-arbitration. So all, all these guys, 34 of them are under contract. 34 guys starting next week will be using up 34 of the 40 available 40 man roster spots. They also have six option uh, option players, players who have contract options for next year. Uh, it's kind of a mixed bag on those. You've got Daniel Hudson, Joe Kelly, Lance Lynn, Alex Reyes, Blake Trinan, and Max Muncy. Uh, I think it's safe to say Lance Lynn and his $18 million option are a no-go for next year. Uh, there were times this season when it looked like well, maybe it's only 18 million bucks. Maybe they'll pick him up, just give some stability to the rotation. I don't think anybody at this point expects the Dodgers to pick up uh, Lance Lynn's option. Now, Joe Kelly, his is only nine and a half million dollars. He he loves the Dodgers. He he he's a Southern California boy. 
uh, I think there's probably some mutual interest there. Uh, so whether they pick up his option or decline the option, but still try to resign him, I think that's a possibility that Joe Kelly's back next year. Now, if they pick up the option, boom, that's a roster spot he's taken up. Max Muncy seems to me like a no-brainer to pick up the option. It's $14 million. Even if they decide to move on from Max Muncy, the way to do that is by trading him uh, because he is a very good power hitter on a very reasonable contract. And so there will be trade value for him. The way to do that is not by declining the option. So Muncy's going to use up one of those spots. Uh, Daniel Hudson, it's six and a half million bucks. You know, if he wants to play, mate, I don't, I, I, I'm so torn. Daniel Hudson has been so close to retirement a couple times and I don't know if they'll pick up his, his option. Uh, and then you've got Alex Reyes and Blake Trinan, Trinan, Trinan. I think we don't even know what the option is. We don't know the terms of that contract, which is weird. Uh, but you know, unless it's like super duper cheap, doesn't seem likely they'll pick that one up. Alex Reyes, it's $3 million. They signed him. He never pitched for them. I have no idea on Alex Reyes, honestly. Uh, so, you know, but you figure a couple of those options may be picked up. So say two, maybe three roster spots there, which puts us at 36 or 37. And then you've got guys who aren't, under contract for next year, but the Dodgers might be interested in bringing him back. Like say Clayton Kershaw. He doesn't count towards those 34 because he is a free agent next week. Uh, Ryan Brazier, kind of the same boat. He's, he's a guy the Dodgers would probably love to have back, um, but he's not currently under contract. Uh, other guys I, I'm looking at who else isn't under contract for next year. Shelby Miller, definitely a guy they might be interested in having back uh, under the right terms. Uh, Jimmy Nelson, probably not. I think they've, uh, you know, what is it? Fool me 18 times. Shame on you. Uh, that's the Jimmy Nelson. Uh, then you got Kike Hernandez and Ahmed Rosario. You know, Rosario is not coming back. Kike, maybe uh, if he wants to, you know, come back and play a certain role. But it seems like probably not. Colton Wong, no. Uh, Jake Marisnik, no. David Peralta, no. Jason Hayward, maybe, uh, depending on the role and, you know, what he wants to do. Uh, the, the easy thing to forget about Jason Hayward is that the Dodgers didn't pay him much of anything this year. They paid him the league minimum, but he did make a lot of money this year. And so even if he took a major pay cut next year, it would he'd still be expecting a raise over what the Dodgers paid him. And so, you know, was this a, he rebuilt his value and he'll go back and play for somebody else next year? Or did he love playing for the Dodgers, love playing with Freddie Freeman, all of that stuff, and want to come back on a team-friendly deal? You know, possibility. Uh, J.D. Martinez, probably not, just because if they really are going to pursue Shohei Otani, there's definitely not room for both J.D. Martinez and Shohei Otani on this roster. Uh, and, and so definitely not immediately. You know, JD could be a guy they revisit later in the off season if they don't get Otani, but, but nothing anytime soon. So, so we're looking at those guys, uh, that that's kind of, that that's a overview of what the 40 man roster looks like. I'm going to come back in a minute. I'm going to talk about some of the moves that the Dodgers need to make this off season, which would then go towards that 40 man roster. And, and that's where we start getting into the crunch part of things. So I'm going to come back a minute and talk about that. Thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. And please keep it Locked On Dodgers. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Hey, I'm back. I want to thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. Especially want to thank you everydayers, those of you who are with us 
every weekday morning. We really appreciate it. Uh, if you're not an everydayer, it's really easy to become one. Just watch or listen every weekday morning. We'll be talking Dodgers with you all off season, just like we did all season, like we have been for the last five years. We love we love doing the show. Love hearing from you guys. I uh, want to remind you, if you're watching this on YouTube, we'd love to hear from you through the YouTube comments section. If you're listening on the podcast, we'd love to hear from you through social media or email or whatever. I'll give you all that contact info at the end of the episode, like I always do. And remember, you can listen to the World Series on SiriusXM or the SXM app. Just launch the app and search for World Series. You can also listen to this podcast on the SXM app by searching for Locked On Dodgers. Uh, and with that said, let's uh, let's keep talking about the, this roster crunch. Let's talk about some of the things that the Dodgers need to do this offseason. We talked about at least th- 34 of their 40-man roster spots are uh, are used up. Uh, probably more like 36, uh, which leaves them four open spots. So immediately, I, and not immediately, but by November, they have to protect guys for the Rule 5 draft. What is that, you ask? Well, the Rule 5 draft, every every year at the winter meetings, uh, players who are eligible for the Rule 5 draft and are not on their team's 40-man roster, uh, they are they can be taken by any other team. Now, the way you are eligible for the Rule 5 draft is how long you've been in the organization, and that depends on how old you were when you signed with the organization. And so in general, I'm just scrolling to to find the quick explainer, but basically if you were under 19, under age 19, when you signed with the organization, then they have to put you on the 40 man roster within five years. Uh, if they, if you're 19 or older, then they have to put you on the 40 man roster, uh, after your fourth season. And so that's how you become eligible. Uh, so if you've met those time requirements and aren't yet on the 40 man roster, you are eligible for the rule five draft. And in that draft, any team, It goes just like a draft. It takes turns picking and you can take any rule five eligible player from any other team with the one caveat being that they have to stay in the big leagues the whole next season. So like last year, the Brewers took Gus Varland from the Dodgers. Actually, maybe, maybe the Cardinals took him and trade him to the Brewers. I can't remember. It seemed like there might've been a trade involved, which can't happen, but one way or another, uh, Gus Varland ended up on the Brewers as a rule five draft pick. And then the Brewers didn't want to have him on their roster anymore because he had an implosion game and and didn't pitch well. And they said, well, so much for that. And so they gave him back to the Dodgers and he ended up pitching in the big leagues for the Dodgers too last year. Um, That's what happens. You have to keep a guy in the big leagues or give him back to the team that you took him from. And so teams will sometimes take, take risks. It's usually the worst teams uh, that that actually take players in the Rule 5 draft. The Dodgers, I can't remember the last time the Dodgers actually took a player in the Rule 5 draft because it's it's teams that can afford, I remember the Padres a few years ago by a few, I mean, uh, it could be anywhere between five and 60 years ago. They took, I think they had three Rule 5 guys uh, on, their, on their roster for the whole season, uh, including there was that catcher who they ended up trading to the Mariners. I can't remember his name. It was in the uh, the Austin Nola trade, uh, I think. Anyway, but the the Padres because they were a bad team, they're like, well, sure, we'll take these guys who have a lot of potential, good stuff, whatever it is. They've got potential. We're going to take these guys. We'll hide them on our roster all season, and then after that one season on the big league roster, then you can send them back to the minor leagues. And teams often do. And, and so. Uh, but so that, that's the kind of teams that take, uh, take players in the rule five draft. Sorry. It's going to drive me crazy. If I don't remember the name of that guy, uh, I'm looking up Austin Nola to see who he, Luis Torrens, uh, I believe they, yeah. In 2017 Torrens spent the whole year on the Padres roster. He batted 163 with a 446 OPS. That's a 22 OPS plus. Uh, in 2017, in 2018, the year after spending the whole year in the big leagues, 
he spent the year in high A in my hometown of Lake Elsinore. So he went from the major leagues to high A because that's the level he should have been at, but they liked Torrens' potential as a catcher. And so they took in the rule five draft, stashed him on the roster for a year and then sent him back to the minors. And they eventually traded him in the Austin Nola trade. But so it was that 2017 Padres team uh, that I'm, I'm trying to look at their roster from that year and see who else they had who, uh, who was on the roster as a rule five draft pick. Cause I'm pretty sure they had three guys that year who just didn't belong in the big leagues, but they were rule five draft picks. So they were in the big leagues. I can't remember who the other guys were, but Luis Torrens is one of them. Anyway, that's what teams do. Sometimes they will take a guy, stash him, move on. So the Dodgers often lose guys in the rule five draft because they they're not taking anybody. They have roster crunch. They don't have room for these guys on their 40 man roster. And so other teams will sometimes take them. And uh, this year, the Dodgers eligible wise, they have two guys who for sure, for sure, for sure will get added for added to the 40 man roster to protect them from the rule five draft. That is Nick Frasso and Landon neck. No doubters. Those two guys are going on the roster. That means we're up to 38 of our 40 roster spots used up. And then you've got, Hunter Fiducia, he's a solid prospect as a catcher. Uh, he's eligible. Uh, he he was actually eligible last year for the Rule 5 draft pick, but he, he played really well this year. So he is going to be – if if the Dodgers don't put Fiducia on the 40-man roster, somebody will take Hunter Fiducia in the Rule 5 draft. Dodgers know that, so I think he's likely to go onto the 40-man roster. That's 39 spots. And then you've got, you know – a handful of guys who are possibilities. You've got uh, four guys who are, who were already eligible last year um, and didn't get taken, but had solid years in the minors. You got John Rooney, you've got Jose Ramos, you got Braden Fisher, Mark, Wish- Mark Washington. Uh, these guys are guys who definitely could get taken uh, and, and could take up a, a roster spot for a lesser team. Uh, and the Dodgers would be risk, at risk of losing them. Now, they probably wouldn't lose all four of these guys. I don't think all four of them would get taken, but all four of them have a possibility of being taken. And the Dodgers might just be okay with that. Uh, I think John Rooney, I, I think Rooney and Ramos are both more possibilities to add to the 40 man roster um, just because of the value they could bring uh, to the team. Braden Fisher and Mark Washington. Both guys, it's like if they got taken in the Rule 5, I think it would be kind of like Gus Farland last year. Like, okay, well, we didn't know what to do with them anyway. And so so enjoy. Enjoy your new player. So, uh, but, you know, if they add you – know, that that could be 40 roster spots right there. If they added Rooney, uh, if they added Frasso, Knack, Fiducia, and Rooney, that's, that's your 40-man roster. It's full at this point. Uh, you know, maybe they don't totally fill it up with those guys, but that's before you've gotten to free agency at all. And, you know, Shohei Otani, uh, some other starting pitchers, you know, that Yoshinobu, Yoshinobu Yamamoto from Japan, uh, Blake Snell, Aaron Nola, I- anybody the Dodgers might be interested in signing as a free agent. And that's the big names. There's also smaller names, you know, who, Fill fill roster spots, fill holes on the roster, which the Dodgers have. Uh, those guys will need a forty man roster spot, you know, and that's plus Clayton Kershaw, plus Ryan Brazier, plus Shelby Miller. Any of those guys who they want to sign need a roster spot. So I'm going to come back in a minute. Keep talking about this about how you break through the roster crunch, how you create spots on the roster for these guys. So. Thank you again for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. And please continue to keep it Locked On Dodgers. All right, I am back. I want to thank you again for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. Remind you to check out SiriusXM and the SXM app for all your World Series needs. Uh, MLB Network Radio on SiriusXM is a lot of fun. If you like baseball talk radio, uh, and sometimes I'm really in the mood for that. Sometimes I'm not, but sometimes I really am. They've got some good, smart people on there. Uh, you know, some others too. 
but you know, it, it's hit and miss like MLB network on TV, but uh, there's some good stuff there. Yeah. So check out Sirius XM and the SXM app. You can also listen to this, this podcast there, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you again to our everydayers. Uh, if you're not an everydayer, please become one. If you have friends and family who like this show, please tell them about it. So we talk about this roster crunch. How do you get through that? Well, the first, the first option is you look at guys who are currently on the 40 man roster and you wouldn't really miss them if they were gone. Uh, and whether that means non-tendering them, if they're pre-arbitration, you just non-tender you DFA a guy, you know, whatever, uh, roster contract mechanism you use, the end result is you get a guy off the roster, uh, guys who jumped to mind, uh, immediately Tyler Sear pitched a little for the Dodgers this year may have some potential, but like when when I say the name Tyler Sear, you guys love the Dodgers. You you might be thinking who, and then if I remind you, Sear is spelled C Y R. You'd be like, oh, I think I remember seeing that name and and thinking that was weird. Tyler Sear is thirty years old. He has pitched in the big leagues a total of fifteen innings in his life, all in the last two seasons. One and two thirds of those innings came for the Dodgers this year. He pitched fine. But uh, then he got hurt, and would you really miss Tyler Sear? No. They could even, you know, non-tender him and and then try to sign him to a minor league deal. Say, hey, we'd like to have you in the organization. Uh, if you want to come back and pitch in AAA and have a chance to, to work yourself back on, we'd love to have you back. You know, that uh, Tyler Sear jumps out as a guy like that. Uh, Brian Hudson is a guy who you wouldn't miss him if he was gone. Unfortunately, Victor Gonzalez has kind of reached that point of like, okay, do you have a role going forward? And, and the answer might be no. Uh, Gus Varland, uh, Alex Vesia. They probably won't dump Vesia, um, at least not directly. Vesia could be a guy in a trade. Uh, you know, because left-handed relievers still have, and maybe Victor Gonzalez is more of a trade option than a, than a dump option. Uh, but you know, these guys is like, okay, well, do we need these guys? Uh, Ryan Yarbrough, he, he pitched well for the Dodgers pitched fine, but does he really have a role? I don't know that he has a role. Uh, and, and so, you know, those are some guys you could, you could say, okay, well, let's, uh, let's just, Make make some room on the 40-man roster via those guys. Then you've got guys who are trade bait. Uh, you know, Andy Pajas, he's a prospect. He's been on the Dodgers roster, 40-man uh, roster now for a couple of years since he became Rule 5 eligible and they added him. I, I maintain, I don't think Andy Pajas is in the Dodgers future. He's a right fielder. So is Mookie Betts. Maybe now that, you know, Mookie Betts, plays second base and likes second base, you know, if Pajas was a guy they really, really wanted to keep, then maybe, maybe that has opened up a little room for him. But Andy Pajas also like he didn't hit well in Oklahoma city. I guess he didn't pay, play much in Oklahoma city this year, just one game in double a, he hit pretty well, but he was hurt a lot of the time. He's just, you know, his shine has gone away a little bit. And the one thing that Pi has really has going for him is he's 22 years old, has a ton of power. What what that screams to me, hey, here's a guy who's young, has a ton of power, and doesn't really have a clear future with the Dodgers. Let him highlight a trade, headline a trade for something that the Dodgers need right now. Uh Pa has is that kind of guy. Johnny DeLuca. Love Johnny DeLuca. Uh and, and maybe, maybe there is a future for him with the Dodgers, but if they don't see it. He's a guy who could have more value as trade bait. Again, a lot of power, uh, you know, a lot of speed, a lot of things that other teams might, you know, he wouldn't headline a deal like Andy Pye has probably. You're not quite as highly ranked as a prospect, but, you know, a team, there are probably a lot of teams that would like to have a guy like Johnny DeLuca. And and so he's a guy who could be trade bait. You've got guys like uh, Jorby Vivas, like, He's been on the Dodgers 40-man roster. He was the one that they added 
in 2019, no, 2020, uh, whichever year that they ended up canceling the Rule 5 draft. Um, they had added him, and then they didn't even have the Rule 5 draft, so they didn't even need to add him. Uh, but but Vivas, he hit well at AA this year and then didn't hit well at AAA. Overall, I mean, he's not a great hitter, but he's also young. He plays, you know, uh, second base, third base, left field. Uh, he's got some speed. He, you know, he's got some power. Uh, he, he's a guy who won't headline a trade, but could be a, a solid, you know, secondary piece in a trade to get something they actually need. Uh, Michael Bush, unfortunately, you know, and, and some people are more fired up about this than me. I, I do think I would have rather, rather had, as I talked about the other day, would have rather had Michael Bush on the Dodgers postseason roster than an injured David Peralta. Uh, but, you know, I don't know what Michael Bush's future is with the Dodgers, uh, defensively, all that stuff. Michael Bush, though, tore it up in the minor leagues this year, is a very, very good hitter could absolutely headline a trade for a, a good piece. Uh, and then this one, I, I'm hesitant to even say this. I don't think it's very likely, but Diego Cartaya uh, has, has been a top prospect, not just for the Dodgers, but in all of majors of baseball, Diego Cartaya had a terrible season in 2023. And now, that would mean if the Dodgers were to trade him, they'd be selling low on Cartaya, which isn't really Andrew Friedman's style. But he does still have some of that prospect shine. And so it might not be selling as low. He still might be able to trade him based on the reputation he's had more than on how bad he was this last year. Uh, and the fact is, if they add Hunter Fiducia to the 40-man roster to protect him for the Rule 5 draft, there's another catcher. They've got Dalton Rushing, who has surpassed Cartaya in their own organization among catchers in the prospect rankings. And so Cartaya could be, if, I don't think they will go looking to trade him, but if there's another team that wants him and will give back prospect or give back uh, value, treating him with the prospect status that he had or close to what he had going into 2023, you know, if he could headline a deal for a Corbin Burns or a, you know, and I, I don't know about specifics because I mean the, the Brewers, I don't know that they need a catcher. Um, but you know, if there is a pitcher on the trade market that the Dodgers wanted and the other team wanted Diego Cartaya, I think he would be in the conversation. Uh, so I don't think they'll go looking to trade him, but he, he could be a guy involved in a trade. Um, so there are, there are ways to make these, uh, and, and re really anybody can be traded. Like there are very few guys in the Dodgers organization who are untouchable. Even some of these starting pitchers, you know, uh, between Bobby Miller, uh, that, that was another question. Somebody else asked us, uh, the other day when I put out a call for questions said, uh, of our young three pitchers, Bobby Miller, Ryan Pepio and Emmett Sheehan, who would you be the least surprised to see as part of a trade package for a starting pitcher? That was from at T corn buster on Twitter. Um, yeah. And, and like, you know, and then I'd throw in Gavin stone into that bunch, you know, some of these guys, they're not going to trade all those guys, probably not even going to trade two of those guys. But if Emmett Sheehan could headline a trade, they might do that. Uh, you know, they, they've got so many, young starting pitchers and what other organizations would do would, would be roll out a, a starting rotation next year of, Hey, we're doing a six man rotation and it's Bobby Miller, Ryan Pepio, Gavin Stone, Emmett Sheehan, Kyle Hurt, Nick Frasso and Landon Knack is ready in triple a when one of those guys gets hurt and they would just boom, let's, let's create the rotation of the future. Let's see who pans out. Dodgers, don't really have that luxury of saying we're going to use six rookie starting pitchers, but I think they will have a young rotation. There, there's a lot for them to think about. And we'll talk more about that this off season of like what their rotation might look like next year in terms of specific players. And in terms of 
overall composition, but you know, one or two of those guys could be involved in trades. So it's going to be really fascinating this off season to see how Andrew Friedman and his front office manage this roster crunch because it's a, it's a real thing and it's really going to affect them. So love to hear your thoughts. Uh, let me know if I didn't explain anything well, if I over explain anything, you know, all that stuff. Uh, love talking Dodgers with you. So that's going to do it for me today. Thank you again for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. If you're not an everydayer, please just watch or listen every weekday morning. We love talking with you. Uh, please tell your friends and family about the show. You can follow us on Instagram and on Twitter at Locked On Dodgers. Vince is on Twitter at Vince Since 91. I'm on Twitter at Snydog, and the DMs are open in all those places. Our email address is lockedondodgers at gmail.com. And our phone number for voicemails or text messages is 323 863 lock 5625. We are here every weekday morning, and we hope you'll be here with us. When you get in your car or sit on your couch, tell your smart device to play podcast Locked On Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree, you just have to listen. We'll talk to you tomorrow.